shoulders up towards your ears for a moment. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And then just exhale out your mouth and let the shoulders drop. And feel yourself as always arrive. So this is the time for you to be able to go within, to tap into your own inner truths and to connect with yourself on a deeper level to notice your own patterns, tendencies, and to be able to meet yourself always from a place of compassion and love. And just like sometimes we see in the world where there's this division, where we have this us and them, and we do that sometimes even within ourselves. We have these inner conflicts and we have this one side and then we have this other side. And part of with yoga is to be able to bring harmony into ourselves and of course into the division that we see in the world. And we do that from a place of love. And love is, as I mentioned once before, for with uh, power versus force and the book, if you haven't read it, it's truly spectacular. It's a great, great, informative and fascinating read. And it talks about the different levels of consciousness and love being 500. Now, joy is actually a higher uh, state of consciousness than love. But from love, we can bring things back into wholeness and harmony. And sometimes when we start to see division, in the world, or we start to experience division even within ourselves, which is often expressed as that inner conflict where we don't feel quite settled within ourselves. We want to approach it from a place of love, because again, from that place of love is where we start to find that fullness, and through that fullness is harmony. So bring your hands just either to rest down on your knees, or you can always have your palms facing up. Of course, you can take a mudra, bringing your thumb and your index finger to touch. Or as I've also mentioned before, if ever you find that your thumb goes to a different finger, just follow that because there's a beautiful wisdom within the body that knows exactly what it needs if we just listen, if we just follow. And I think often of this when sometimes you go into a grocery store and you may have something in your mind that you're going to pick up and then you move, you gravitate towards something. So it's almost a pull that you're drawn to that. And then you end up getting mad instead. It may be that on uh, a more nutritional level, you may be actually seeking or needing a specific mineral or vitamin and the body knows what it needs. So just trusting always in the wisdom of your own body and then gently close your eyes, let your shoulders draw down, bring your navel in towards your spine so you maintain that upright position. And you will also feel just how the muscles of the back begin to engage when you draw your navel in towards your spine, as opposed to letting the belly draw out. And then take another deep inhale through your nose. And a long exhale again out your mouth. begin to become aware energetically of where you maybe feel pulled or slightly off center. So what I mean by this is that sometimes we don't realize until our eyes are closed that physically the body may be in one position, but energetically it may be in a different. So you may find that either one shoulder is energetically dropping down, even though both shoulders appear to be even. Or sometimes we feel that even though the shoulders are stacked over top of the hips, that we feel pulled slightly forward or we feel drawn slightly back. And again, this is energetically not in a physical body. Of course, over time, if that's a pattern, then the body will start to express that. But just notice if in this moment or even a slight twist. And think of slowly beginning to align your energetic body with the physical body. So if you notice energetically going in one way, just as you're inhaling, almost imagine you're gently drawing it back. And then exhaling and setting that in place. And just continue this way of just observing once more where energetically there may be any slight shifts, any collapsing points, 
and then bringing again that into alignment with the physical body. And if you don't notice this, it's no concern. So some of you may be able to tap into that or be aware of that more. And perhaps if that's not your experience, don't again concern yourself at all. That's absolutely fine. And then from here, we'll begin to deepen the breath. So once you feel again that the energetic body is more aligned with the physical, let's take another deep inhale through the nose. But this time exhaling through the nose. And then with each breath, drawing in more breath in the inhale. And lengthening the exhale. And again. And now just allow the breath to become more even and steady. And the last one here. And then bring your hands together at your heart center. And think of it the right side of the body and the left side of the body coming to meet in the midline and right at the heart. So bringing the qualities of the solar and the lunar, the active and dynamic, inactive and passive, bring it into harmony, the center of your heart, respecting and appreciating both aspects that are within you and around you. And that dynamic play of both huh? at all times, huh? Huh? meeting both gain from a place of love. Huh? And bring them into harmony again in the center of your heart. Huh? Take one more deep inhale through your nose. Huh. Huh. And a long exhale out your mouth. And then bring your arms up overhead. Reach up through the fingertips. And then just lift the heart. Bring your arms up. You bring your hands back together. Just draw the right hand down your back, left hand to your right elbow. Keep the right hip rooted and start to breathe into your side body here. You come back to center. Release now your arm, getting into the left side body. Reach with your fingers. Press the heel of your right hand. And maybe a little closer towards the mat, but without lifting the left hip. And then rotate your torso and reach with your left fingers so you get a beautiful stretch here into your back. And then bring yourself back up. Now bring the left hand down, bring your right hand to your left elbow. And the same, just allowing the left hip to stay down, breathing again back into the side body. And then coming back to center, taking again the right, reaching, and then extend your right arm. Keep once more rooting down through the right hip. Get a little deeper into it by walking your hand either further away from you or coming onto your forearm. And then once more, rotate your torso and extend out through your fingers. And the more you extend out through the fingers, the more you rotate, you're going to feel this gain into your back. Okay, slowly bring yourself up, bring your hands behind you, bring your feet onto the mat. We're going to come into our reverse tabletop. So bring the shoulder blades towards each other, begin to lift the hips. And as you're lifting the hips, keep bringing the shoulder blades closer and closer. And then let your head be in a neutral position. You're breathing here, keep pressing your feet into the mat. And then exhale, slowly come down. 
Bring your right leg out. Bring your left foot to the inside of your right leg and begin to fold. And as you're here, just say inhaling, finding that length, and then exhaling, starting to soften. And use the next inhale to go just a little further. And then the exhale to draw down. Good. Use now the next inhale to bring yourself up. Bring now your foot onto the mat and slowly come down. Now, once you come down, release the left leg. Bring your right knee in towards your chest. Take your right hand to the edge of your right foot and start to press out through the heel. Bring your knee out to the side and you're here in your half happy baby. And I want you to just keep bringing the knee a little closer towards the ground. Keep pressing your foot into your hand. Okay, now bend your knee. Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee. Keep your right shoulder rooted and start to draw your knee a little closer towards the left side of your mat. And now come back to center. Bring your knee in towards your chest. Hug in tight. Interlace your fingers. Start to press your foot up towards the ceiling. And then begin to walk your hands up your leg. And as you walk your hands up your leg, you can either take your first two fingers, wrap them around your big toe, rotate so that your toes are pointed slightly out to the right, and then bring the leg out to the right. Or if you find that that's not accessible, don't hesitate to bend your knee, or you can interlace your fingers and then just use your hand to guide your knee out to the side. So you could be in this position or this. And as you're bringing your leg out, try to still keep the left hip drawn down. And then bring your left hand to your hip, especially if you have your fingers around your big toe. And then you can flex your left foot here. Keep bringing your toes towards the floor. Start to draw your foot a little further up towards your shoulder. If you again have your fingers around your big toe. And I want you to make a mental imprint here. Because we're going to come into the standing position for our balancing. And if you can tap into how you feel right now, what's the alignment? Because you're supported, of course, by your mat on the ground, it's going to feel a lot easier in a standing position. Not that you won't still be a first challenge with your balance, but you're able to see what is the alignment of this asana while you're supported again on your back. Okay. Now from here, just draw the leg back up, bend the knee again, bring your chin, your knee towards each other, and then bring your right foot down. We're gonna come into bridge. So having your knees and your ankles in one line, bring your hands beside you, start to lift your hips. Now, as you're lifting your hips, you can always be here with your fingers pointing up. Or, of course, you can start to interlace your fingers bring your shoulder blades a little closer towards each other. Start to press your feet into the mat. Keep bringing the shoulder blades closer because that's what's really gonna allow the heart to start to move towards the chin, the hips to lift up higher and breathing here. And now lift the heels, slowly release the spine down. Bring both of your knees in towards your chest, hug in tight. Take your hands behind your legs, rock yourself up. We're gonna come into Navasana for four breaths. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So bring the arms out, start to lift the legs, bring the shoulder blades towards each other, bring the gaze to look at your toes. Start to warm up your core. Last breath. Excellent. Now bring your feet down, same thing, other side. So just now taking the left leg out, bring your right foot to the inside, rotate the torso. And then begin to draw your heart forward and fold it.
And slowly bring yourself up. Bring your knee in towards you. And then we're just going to come right down. So now this time, once you come right down, we're going to come into a second bridge. And then we're going to do the left side. So start to, again, bring your feet and your knees in one line. Interlacing your fingers, bring the shoulder blades closer towards each other. If, again, this doesn't feel right in your body, you can be here. You can remain here. Or you're going to start to draw the right knee, press up through your right foot, lift onto your left toes, and still lift the heart and the leg a little higher. Good. Now bring your foot down. The same thing the other side. You can bring both heels down before you lift the left leg. Bring the left leg up. And again, coming onto the, your right toes, reaching up. Keep lifting the heart. Good. Now bend the knee, bring the foot down, release the hands, slowly bring your spine down. Release now the right leg, bring the left knee in towards your chest and hug in tight. Okay, coming into your half happy baby, pressing out through the heel, draw the knee out to the side. And as you're here, just keep this feeling of drawing further and further. Continue to push your foot into your hand. Use the strength of your arm to get your knee a little further out by the side body, closer towards the mat. And then bend the knee, release, same thing. So you're just going to cross the knee over, keep the shoulder rooted down. Breathing here. Maybe you bring the knee a little closer, but always watch with the shoulder so you don't have to worry about the knee touching the floor. You may just find that it's away from, but you want to keep the shoulder connected. Good. Now come back to center. Hug your knee again in. Interlace your fingers. Bring your leg up. So once more, you can start to walk your hand up your leg, bringing your leg a little closer towards you. And then if it's available, taking your first two fingers around your big toe. Now you want to rotate. So I really want you to keep this in mind for your standing position because it's gonna be so key for your balance. If you just bring the leg out, it's gonna be very, very difficult, one, to find the range, as well as be, again, able to maintain your stability. So think here, you're going to rotate so the toes are pointing slightly off to the side. Then you're going to bring your leg out. Then you're going to flex your right foot here. But otherwise, you can have still your knee bent and just take your hand to your knee and flex your foot. And then again, have your right foot flexed. So this may be a better position for you right now. Just choose always what's most suitable. And then breathe into it. Try to keep both of the hips facing upwards. So just watch that there isn't a rolling here. And then one more breath. We come back to center. Again, just hug your knee in towards your chest. And then release your leg. So now we're going to come into our fish pose. So just bring your hands underneath you. Start to lift your heart. Bring your elbows a little closer. Lift the heart even higher, and then let your head come down. And keep the heart lifted here. You can point your toes if you'd like. Stay for one more inhale. Long exhale. And then lift the heart, slowly come down, release your hands. Bring again both of your knees in towards your chest. Take your hands, rock yourself up, and we'll come back to Navasana. So again, bringing the legs up, bring your shoulder blades towards each other. Bring your gaze to look at your toes. Two more inhales and exhales. Last one. Great. Now cross your right ankle over top. Bring your hands forward and just walk back to your downward facing dog. So here from your downward facing dog, we're gonna move through that undulation of coming forward into plank, 
back into downward facing dog. We do this four times. So just move with the breath. Let the breath initiate. So as you're coming forward and then push the earth away as you're drawing back. And think about bringing your navel towards your spine as you're doing this. As you're coming forward, you're pushing into the earth, coming up into that space between shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, navel's drawing in towards the spine. And again, you're coming back. We'll do this two more times. So coming forward and then pressing and coming back. And again, coming forward and then pressing and coming back. Okay, now lift your right leg, draw your leg up, reach, 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 reach. Keep pressing into the heels of the hands, draw the right hip slightly down. Watch those and collapsing in the shoulders. And then bring the knee in towards the chest. Step the right foot to the right hand. Bring the left heel down. And start to walk your hands towards your left foot. Now you can be here. You can push up through the heel a little more. You can come further down towards the mat if you would like. Just watch you don't roll back. And then taking the left hand and reach your arm up. You keep extending up through the fingers, drawing the shoulders slightly back. Beautiful, now bring your hand down, bring your foot down, pivot onto your toes, and we're gonna come into Anjani Asana. So just bringing the knee down, toes can be tucked or untucked. Reach up, interlace your fingers in Shiva Mudra, then deeply into your knee and start to draw back. And just keep reaching, 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 reaching. Good, bring now your hands down, lift your back knee, now draw your right arm up, reach up through your fingers, and on your next breath, bring your arm down. We're gonna come up into our high lunge. So really push up through the back heel as you reach your arms up. Good, continue to push up through the heel, reach up a little more. Take now your right hand again down your back. Draw the hand a little further and see about taking either your left hand to your sacrum or bringing your hands towards each other to touch or to meet. And lift the heart a little, keep pushing out through the back heel. Excellent, one more breath. Release your hands, frame your front foot. We're gonna come into pyramid pose. So slide your back foot three, three and a half feet, draw the right hip crease back and start to fold in. Now, as you're folding in, you can always take your hand behind your ankle. Use this as a way to create a little bit of resistance to pull yourself closer in towards your leg. Then let your shoulder blades draw down your back and breathe in here. Next breath, bend into your knee. Release, step your back foot forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. We're gonna come into our chair pose. So sitting down into it, reaching the arms up. Now, if you ever find for yourself it's preferable to be here, you can. You can always have your hands at your heart as well. Otherwise, try to be thinking about having your biceps by your ear as opposed to forward or too far back. And then just a little deeper into it, keep reaching out through your fingers. Good, one more breath. Press into your feet and lift your heart. Interlace your fingers, reach down, lift the heart a little higher. Now bend your knees and fold forward. Now as you're folding forward, keep reaching your wrists up away from your low back. Continue to draw your heart towards your legs. See if you can just reach the arms just a little further away. Good, now release the arms down. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Step back with the left foot. Have it at a 45 degree angle. Come up into your warrior one. And sitting into your warrior one, left arm's gonna come underneath the right. Bring the elbows up and sit a little deeper into it. Coming into humble warrior, reach forward. Start to draw into the inside of the leg, drawing the right hip back. Stay with the breath. Maybe get a little closer towards the ground. Good. 
And now on your next breath, release, frame your foot, pivot onto the edge of the back foot. When you do this, you can always either scoot your foot, lift the hip, have the leg in front, or you can take your leg, stack your feet, and lift up. Otherwise, you can take your first two fingers around your big toe, progress out, lift up. Good, release, come to plank. Two breaths here, and then you have the option of either bringing the knees down or moving through your first vinyasa. So if you can bring the knees down, untuck the toes, come down onto your heart, Bring yourself into your Bhujangasana. Come slowly down and tuck the toes, hips to heels, pausing here, and then coming back to your downward facing dog. Or if you're moving right through your Chaturanga Dandasana, you know where you're going. So come back to downward facing dog. Breathe here for two breaths, and then we'll do the left side. Left leg lifting up, reach, reach, reach. Again, try to think hips square. Oh. Bring the leg up a little higher. Bring your knee in towards oh. your chest. Left foot to left oh. hand. Pivot your foot down. Coming now again into a beautiful oh. stretch for the hamstrings. Lifting up and again, if you feel that there's a little more flexibility, just keep bringing your foot further so you can come a little closer towards the mat. And then reach up through your fingertips. And one more deep inhale. Exhale, bring your arm down. Walk Push again up. your hand, frame your foot, pivot onto your toes, untuck your toes, and sweep your arms up. And Anjali Asana. So lift up through the heart. Push Keep drawing back, continue to bring. Your quad a little closer towards the mat as you extend back through your fingers. And reach just a touch further. And then again, frame your foot, tuck your toes, lift your back knee, and then fingertips or your palm, and reaching up through the left arm. Press up through the back heel, draw the left shoulder back. And then bring the arm down. And again, as you're coming up into your high lunge, really push out through the heel and draw the pelvis forward as you're bringing the arms up. Good. Reach, reach, reach. Now it'll be the left hand. Bring your hand down your back. Bringing again your fingers either towards each other to me, lifting the heart. Breathing here. Good, keep the heart drawn up, continue to push out through the back heel. Release, bring your hands down, frame your foot, take your back foot three, three and a half feet in pyramid pose, just folding in. Drawing again the left hip crease back, taking the hand behind the ankle or fingertips are of course, you can always have locks to bring the floor up to you. Otherwise, drawing the heart a little further, and again, drawing the hip crease back. And next breath, bend into your knees, step again your back foot to meet your front. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Coming back into our chair pose, reaching the arms up, and bring the weight back. Extending out through the fingertips, shoulders down. And then just see with it. Keep the muscles of the face always soft and relaxed. Notice that the jaw is getting tense. One more deep inhale. Exhale. And the next breath, press again into your feet. Once more, lift the heart. This time, now bring your hands together at your heart center, coming into our tree pose. So heel your ankle bone below the knee or above the knee, pulling in towards the middle end of the body. Here, or bring the arms up, interlacing the fingers in Shiva Mudra, or of course you can always extend your arms out. Just keep the tailbone tucked slightly under. You come out of the pose, really, it's no concern ever. 
Just keep challenging yourself. And then bring your hands back through your heart center. Bring the knee forward, take your hand, and either you're here, here, or you're gonna take your hand to the edge of your foot, kick out through the heel. And as you're kicking out through the heel, really straighten your standing leg and keep reaching, reaching. Excellent, one more breath. Bend the knee, bring yourself back to center. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So just taking the left foot, coming into your tree pose, keeping either again your hands at your heart, extending up, interlace your fingers as you move drop, reach, reach, reach up. Or if you extended your arms out, you can do so. And then once more, stay with the breath. Good, last one. Come back again down through the midline of the body. Bring the knee forward. And again, you're either here or if you push out through the heel, again, think with your standing leg, really drawing out through the crown of the leg, lifting out through the crown of your head, pressing down through the heel, reaching out through your fingertips. And then again, coming back to center, release and fold. Now, as you fold, step back with the right foot. Again, you're going to be coming into your Virabhadrasana one on this side now. So reaching the arms up, bend into your front knee. Try to keep your knee right over your ankle. Now it's going to be the right arm coming underneath. Sit into it. Again, lift up through the crown of the head. Keep pressing down to the edge of the back foot and then coming into your humble warrior. So drawing the hip back, breathing into it. Stay with it. Keep pushing the earth away from you. So with your feet, just notice if the feet are actively engaged in the asana or not. So try to really think with your feet. You're pushing again the earth. You're going to lift the left hip just ever so slightly as you draw your torso closer towards the mat. Again, as I mentioned before, you can come down all the way, but there's a bit of a tendency to start to drop in the pose when we do so. So we want to keep a little bit of a lift. Next breath, release. Come again onto the edge of your foot. And once more, you have the option here. So as you're here, you can push the heel of your hand, keep your knee, and reach up. Or you can stack your feet and lift up and reach here. If you feel that it's accessible for you to take your fingers to your big toe, then you can do the same. Reach, reach, reach up. And then release. Come to plank. And the same thing, Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing dog, or do as you did before, coming into Bhujangasana, and then coming into your cobra, back to your child's pose, and into downward facing dog. So Bhujangasana, cobra pose, same pose, just one is in Sanskrit and one is in English. And when we think about a snake, the snake slithered its body and pulls itself. So it finds length in order to lift. So just keep that in mind in the asana. Try to avoid using your hands to push into the mat to come into the pose. You can do that in upward facing dog, but in Bhujangasana, bring your weight to the pelvis in order to find that lift and think length. Okay, next inhale, draw again the right leg up, reach, reach, reach. Bring your knee in towards your chest, right foot to right hand. We're going to come into our warrior two. So push into your right foot, bring yourself up and sit into it. Taking your hand on your leg, coming into goddess, keep the bend in the knee, keep the lift of the heart. Continue to press down to the edge of your back foot. Beautiful. Now from here, straighten your leg, bring your toes in towards each other and bring your hands to your hips. You want to draw your weight back. So I'm just going to turn so that I'm facing towards you. But draw your weight back. Keep as much length in your spine for as long as you can. And then just extend your fingers. And as you're extending your fingers, try again, keep the length. Now from here, you can come down onto your forearms, where you can start to walk your hands back. Thinking about bringing the crown of your head towards the floor. 
Or you can always bring your arms back behind you as well. And then just keep breathing into it. Continue to draw the sit bones upwards towards the ceiling. Good, one more breath. And then bring your hands in front of you. Walk your hands towards your right foot. Bring your knee down. And now from here, take your left foot, bring it slightly off to the side. Let the knee come out to the side and start to draw yourself towards the mat. Now as you're drawing yourself towards the mat, you're gonna lift your right hip up. Now, if you feel okay here, you can start to lift the opposite foot. You can begin to rotate. So taking your left forearm and guiding your heel towards your body to get into a nice stretch here for your quad. Rolling the shoulder back and breathing here. And stay with it for one more breath. And then release the leg. Bring your arm forward and step your back foot to the outside of your front. And then bring again here, coming to prayer hands. So into your namaskar, anjali mudra, tucking the tailbone under, lifting up again through the crown of the head. And you can bring your finger pads to touch. And I know I've mentioned this also before, but it's a really nice way to be able to have more space so that you can create more space in the pelvis. So the more space between the hands, now you can bring your elbows to the inside of the knees and draw them a little further away from each other. As well as this being Hakini Mudra. So again, when we think about the harmony and balance of bringing both the right and the left hemisphere of the brain together. And when they're working together, that's really the optimal state is working with our intuition and our creativity, but also being more logical and analytical and working with our reasoning mind. So here, just keep drawing the tailbone under. And then when you think about the space between the hands, it's like a sphere and a circle is really just like the number zero about union and coming together and of course, that there's no end is this continuous cycle. And it's both everything and nothing simultaneously. So stay here for one more deep breath. Good. And then bring your feet to face forward. We're going to inhale, lift and lengthen. Bend the knees. This time, just come all the way up to standing and hands together in your heart. Coming into our Tutta Hasta Padangustasana. So knee coming up, and exactly as you did when you were on your back, you can bring your leg out to the side, having your hand to your knee, hand to your hip. Otherwise, you're going to take your first two fingers, press into your standing leg, push out through the heel, and again, rotate. Start to draw the leg out, and you can remain here, or you can bring your arm. Keep bringing the leg a little higher. Stay with your inhale. Your exhale, come back to center, bend the knee and release. Beautiful, same thing other side. So I'm just gonna switch because I've got the wall right here. So for space, so bring the left knee up, hand again either to your knee, coming out to the side this way, lifting up through the crown of the head, keeping the foot flex opening here into the pelvis. Or again, taking your hand, press into the leg, push. And then as you're here, again, either keeping your hand or extending. So here I've got the wall. So keeping the hand then at the hip so that you're not relying on a surface if you need to, or you'd like to, of course, you always can. And then coming back and again, release and bring the foot down. Okay, inhale, draw your arms up. Exhale, pull. Bring your hands down. Just sit back to your downward facing dog. We're gonna come into our plank for four breaths, back into downward facing dog. If you want to include a vinyasa in between, you can. Otherwise, just go right forward into your plank, then we'll be returning, as I mentioned, to downward facing dog. So pushing into the heels of the hand, popping up into that space between the shoulder blades. Good, 
Good. One more deep inhale. And exhale. And then back to downward facing dog. And now it's going to be the left. So you're going to draw the left leg up. Reach, reach, reach. Keep pressing the heels of the hands. Bring the leg a little higher. Draw the knee in towards the chest. Left foot to left hand. Right foot coming up into your warrior two and sitting into it. Make any adjustments that you need to, ensuring that you have the alignment. Shoulders over hips, knee over ankle. Continuing to press down and then drawing out your arm up, cradling the back of the head and lifting the heart. And breathe here, really lift up so you feel this nice stretch into the side body as well as this heart opener. Good, now release, straighten the leg. Again, bring the toes in towards each other, hands to the hips and start to fold. So again, you can either draw the arms forward, push into the heels of the hands, we'll be here. You can even bring the crown of the head. Try to keep the ankles though and the hips in one line, or you're gonna bring the crown of your head down. You may find that there's even more space and you feel that the crown of your head is more similar to your forehead. You can just shorten the distance then between the legs. Keep walking the arms back. Keep that length in the spine, or again, bring your arms behind you. Find a little bit more length that way. And breathe in here. One more breath. Good, now bring your hands again forward. Walk your hands towards your front foot. So left, bring the knee down, bring your foot over to the side. And again, as you're here, just feel your way into this. Maybe it's here as you start to come down. Maybe you let the sole of the foot get a little bit into the hip, or again, you come further down. Then you're gonna take again your hand to your heel and start to guide it towards you. And then continue to draw the shoulder back. So you're going to be with your left foot. Myself, I'm doing it the same side on both, just simply so that I don't have my back to you as I did for the other pose, just making sure that coming into it from our wide legged forward fold, you can see me. And then just release, bring again your hand down. Once more, we're going to step the back foot to the outside of the front hand, and we're back into our malasana. Okay, so now from here, I want you just to drop in. So just feel the sense of bringing yourself a little closer in and towards your legs. And we've done this before. This is just such a fun pose. You're going to take your arm and just bring it behind you. And you can see, maybe it's just taking your hand to your ankle. Maybe you bring your other hand to your ankle and you just sit into this. And you can be here. Maybe that doesn't feel accessible. And instead you stay here and you start to play more with creating a bit more space between the hands. But otherwise, if you're good here, then you're definitely gonna be good in bringing your feet closer towards each other. And as you bring your feet closer towards each other, you wanna really push into the heels of the hands. This is gonna allow the heels to lift and then start to think about tapping in, pulling your legs up. Now I'm going to go to straight yep, yep. arms a little bit, bring the legs up a little higher. Oh. Stay with the breath. I have a pen. Bring the legs up just a little higher and release. It's bring your feet down. This time, though, bring your hands behind you. Take now your feet, your first two fingers around your big toes, and then start to bring your legs. And as you're here, keep drawing your toes up. Continue to bring your heart towards your legs. Stay with the breath. So six, so four, two, two, Let the shoulders relax down. Okay, I won't call them right now. One more inhale. But yeah, okay. We're gonna come to our Baddha Kanasana. So bring the heels towards. Start the other, drawing the heart forward and folding in. Just let your forehead come down. Open the windows for ventilation during COVID. Just outside the door. And breathing here. Okay, I'm going. Go, so go for it. Head outside, you know. 
All right. And what about Denise? Did you talk to her? What's that? Did you talk to Denise and Mark? She told me back. So, you yeah. know, I told them what the scoop was. I left yeah, them slowly yeah. come back up. Huh? All right. It and doesn't again, matter. bring the legs up. Oh, Diane. And yeah. Now bring the legs out. Yeah. And you don't need reservation. Can you bring the legs a little Good. further? In our, our one table? A little further. Is, um, do we still have that the one table? On forward. Oh, we just have to go. Stay for one more breath. Okay. We just have to go. Bring on. the legs back together. Release yeah. your fingers. We'll get there. Right. Awesome. So bring the shoulder blades towards each other. Stay with the breath. Bring your gaze to look at your toes. One more breath. Cross the ankles. Come forward onto your hands and back to your downward facing dog. Yeah. All right. Congrats here. Well, bye. bye. Yeah, on your next inhale, come forward again into your plank. We're going to hold for two breaths. So push the earth away from you. Keep pushing out through the heels. And then on your next exhale, bring the knees down. Untuck the toes and bring the heart down towards the floor. Okay, so now we're going to bend our knees. We're going to come into Dhanurasana. So in your Dhanurasana, your bow pose, there's two different variations. You can either have your hands to your ankles or the hands to the tops of your feet. But initially, you want to be thinking of always bringing the shoulder blades towards each other. Weight is here on the pelvis. So try not to crunch into the low back when you first come up into this pose because there's a little bit of a tendency to do that, I notice. So think here. You're going to open the chest first. Then just play with lifting the thighs. That way you're going to feel the weight right away on the pelvis. Then you can use a little bit of momentum. Rock yourself. And then come up. Keep pressing through the back feet. Good. Stay with me. One more breath. Excellent. Come down. Release the feet. Tuck the toes and come into your child's pose. And just let the forehead relax. Try to release any tension here in the low back. Good. Now from here, bring your right knee to your right wrist. Bring your left knee to your left. We're going to come either into saddle pose, bringing either the buttocks to rest into the soles of the feet and coming down onto the forearms. Or you can bring your knees together, bring your feet over to the side and come instead into your Supta Varasana. So if Supta Varasana starts to feel too intense for you, make sure you come into saddle pose instead because there's no, there's no need or any benefit to put any unnecessary strain on your knees. And then slowly coming down, either you can remain here or you can come all the way down. And then just bring your arms up overhead. Keep drawing your knees towards the mat, lifting up and breathing deeply. It's gonna be a beautiful stretch now here for your quads. Keeping as always the muscles of the face soft and relaxed. Noticing where you start to hold tension Noticing if there's any conflicting thoughts, if you came to the practice and seeking peace, but the mind has a different inner dialogue right now, come back to what it is that will bring harmony into your body, your mind, your spirit, through your thoughts, your words, your actions. And really our thoughts are the words that we speak to ourselves in so many ways. So ensuring that they're coming from a place of love and compassion and acceptance, which once more brings fullness and harmony, as opposed to its opposite, which brings discord and disharmony. So one more deep breath here. And then slowly begin to draw yourself back up. Bring your hands behind you. Come on to your hands and knees and you take your right leg back. Rock forward and back. Bring your knee down, same thing other side, just rocking forward and back. And then come back to your downward facing dog. Now draw again the right leg up. 
This time they'll bend the knees, stack the hips, let the heel feel really heavy here. Bring a knee in towards your chest. Step again your right foot to your right hand. Keep your back heel lifted. Start to draw the right hip crease back, and we're going to fold in. Good. Keep drawing the hip crease back. And then bend into your knee, pivot onto your heel. And then start to once more walk your hands, this time towards the center. But you're going to take your right foot, have your foot over at about a 45 degree angle. Take your back foot, tuck the tailbone under, and draw yourself up. Sitting into your goddess, start to sit a little deeper into it. Bring your arms into cactus, try to draw the shoulders slightly under, and breathe in here. Good, stay for one more breath. Keep tucking the tailbone under, and then press into your feet. Pivot your front foot, bring your hands down, and we're gonna come back to our downward facing dog. Bring the left leg up, same thing other side. So bring your leg up, bend your knees, stack your hips, open up. Keep bringing the heel towards the buttock. Good, bring the knee in towards the chest. Left foot to left hand. And again, start to now draw the hip crease back. We want to keep the back heel lifted as we're guiding the heart closer down the leg. Bring the forehead towards the shin. We're taking as you did in pyramid pose, if you did, your hand to your ankle and guiding yourself further down the leg, breathing into the left hip, the stretch again into your crown strings. Good, now bend into your knee, pivot again in your heel. Once more, just walk your hands. And then from this, just make sure that you come up, bring the heels and sitting again into your goddess, coming into your cactus arms, tucking the tailbone under, lifting out through the crown of the head and breathing here. And just keep this feeling of drawing the knees away from each other, tucking again, as I mentioned, the tailbone under and sit a little deeper into it. Beautiful. Stay with it. Two more breaths. The last one. And once more, just press into your feet, bring your back foot, and then start to bring the hands down, lifting the foot, come back to your downward facing dog. Okay, walk now your hands towards your feet. Take your first two fingers, wrap them around your big toes, bring your elbows out to the side, draw the shoulder blades down the back, start to draw the sit bones up. So you can get your torso just a little closer towards your thighs, the crown of your head a little closer towards the mat. Create space around your shoulders, so just Watch if you're crunching in here, try to, again, allow for this space. And then on your next breath, inhale, lift and lengthen. Bend your knees, come down onto your bottom, bring your left leg out, and bring your right foot to the inside of your leg. So we're gonna come back to where we were at the very beginning. And I just want you to feel the difference in your body. So you're gonna start to fold, Again, think about with the heart, drawing the heart forward, and then drawing in. And slowly bring yourself up. Bring your knee in towards your chest. Cross it over. You can bring your heel back behind you either with your hand or your elbow or here and just coming into a twist it'll feel really nice drawing the right shoulder back breathing here and then coming back to center just a counter twist 
We'll come into full cow face pose. So taking now your right leg, crossing it over, right arm is gonna come up, bringing your fingers towards each other or to me. So just as we did when we were in our high lunge, try to think about lifting up through the sternum, the heart, having the elbow drawn up. And in the seated position, tuck the tailbone slightly under. Again, bring your navel in towards your spine. Let the left shoulder drop down. Good, one more breath. And release. Taking the left arm underneath, hug in tight. And then bring your hands beside you. And now we'll do the opposite. So bringing the right leg up, left foot's coming to the inside, draw the hip crease back, fold in, and then start to allow for relaxation, release, and always through that is the depth. So whenever the body is open and relaxed and spacious, we can always go deeper. So use the breath also for that spaciousness, but for warmth too. So allowing the breath to soften by warming the internal body, keeping it inhaling and exhaling through the nostrils. Try to avoid through the mouth unless it's a cleansing breath or a specific pranayama. And then from here, guide again yourself back up. And once more, just cross the leg over. Bring out the heel back behind, either the hand, the elbow, or again, taking the elbow, start to rotate the torso. Keep pressing the elbow against the leg, the leg against the, the elbow. So the more you create that resistance, we're gonna be twisting just a touch deeper. And then come back, counter twist, going in the opposite direction. And then again, coming into your cow face pose, left side. So left arm's gonna lift, bringing your hands towards each other too much. Keep both of the sit bones connected to the mat. And as the hands are touching, stay lifted up through the crown of the head. And if they're not touching, don't focus on trying to bring the hands together. Instead, focus on bringing the elbow by the side body. Let the hand come beside on the other side and be there. And as the elbow gets closer towards the side body, the hands will come to touch. And one more breath. Now release again. Just draw the arm underneath and hug in tight. Good. Release your hands behind you. Bring both of your legs out. If you need to scooch up your mat, then feel free to do so. We're going to come into our reverse pyramid. So as you're coming up, or plank rather, Bring your feet down, draw your heart up, keep bring the shoulder blades towards each other. Let the head be in a neutral position. One more inhale. And exhale, come down. Slowly bring yourself onto your back. Bring both of your knees in towards your chest. Coming into now full happy baby. Press up through the heels, draw the knees towards the floor, bring your toes slightly off at an angle. And if you'd like, you can make this very relaxed, passive, soft, gentle, or you can make this a lot more active dynamic by pressing your knees, drawing them closer towards the mat, pressing the feet into the hands, using the hands to guide you even closer towards the floor. You can remain here, or you can start to extend your right leg out, maybe bringing your leg a little closer towards the floor, keeping the left knee bent, pushing out through the heel and breathing here. And then same thing other side, or just remain here and rock again from side to side. So just choose for yourself. Right. Now bring your feet together, coming into your body kanasana again. Interlace the fingers, start to draw the knees further away from each other, and pull your feet towards you.
Right, now from here, release. You're either gonna bring your legs up, and you can think legs up the wall, bring the arms to the side, or you're gonna come into your shoulder stem. So just think here, you're creating that little bit of momentum initially, and then taking the hands, supporting the low back, lifting up through the soles of the feet, even the chin drawn in towards the chest, and breathing here. Try to get the feet to come over top of the hips, Good, one more inhale. And then exhale, you can either bend the knees, bring your knees, guide them towards your ears. I'm just gonna scooch up so there's a little more space. Or you can come into your halasana. So if you're bringing your feet back, you can always take your hands to your feet and breathe here. Good, now release. And if you were with the legs up the wall, just slowly bring your feet down. And the same if you're in your halasana, and then bring your legs out. Okay, coming back into our fish pose, but we're gonna come into a different variation. So from here, lift first the heart as you did. Think about bringing the heart up so your elbows are beside you rather than sitting on your hands. Now here as you're lifting the heart and you're gonna bring the crown of your head towards the mat, try to still feel this. So watch for this collapsing, try to draw upwards. Now as you bring the crown of your head, you're gonna to start to think about lifting the legs and lifting the arms. Reach up through the fingertips, reach up through the toes. Good. One more inhale. Exhale, bring the legs down. Lift the neck, bring your arms up. Interlace your fingers, press up through your palms, push up through your feet. Now bring both of your knees in towards your chest. Hug in tight. And just as we did at the beginning, we're gonna rock up. This is our last Navasana. Bring the shoulder blades towards each other, reaching out through the fingertips, through the toes. Last breath. Bring your feet down and then take your hands to the edge of your feet and start to fold in Pachimottasana. And just keep drawing the heart further and further forward. And then you can fold in. Good, slowly guide yourself up and come back to your seated position. Once you come to your seated position, bring your hands onto your knees, bring your shoulders up towards your ears, take a deep inhale, and then exhale up the mouth. Okay, start to now draw your right shoulder down, bring then now your torso towards your right leg, over to the left, making little circles here. And then going in the other direction. And just let this feel really fluid. There's no real right, wrong way, of course, to do this. Just creating suppleness in the body where there may be any tension held, letting that go. And then come back to a neutral spine. Drop the chin down towards the chest. Take the right ear towards the right shoulder. Bring the left hand down. Take out your right hand, guide your right ear a little closer, and then start to draw your chin slightly upwards and keeping the left shoulder drawn down. Good, and then release, same thing, other side. So first, just bringing the left ear, then you can take your hand down, take your hand to the side of your head, really focus on the right shoulder drawing down, Bringing the chin up, breathing into the stretch along the side of your neck. Good. 
Good. And then again, releasing, bringing your head to a neutral position, bringing your gaze over your right shoulder, bringing your gaze over your left. Come back to center, bring your shoulders up towards your ears, take a deep inhale, and exhale. So before we do our Nadi Shodana, we're going to do palming. And palming is a really nice way to soothe the optic nerves. So considering how much time we spend in front of screens, and also just I find visually, we are taking in so much information all the time visually, that the eyes can begin to fatigue. So even the mind can start to fatigue through that constant input of information. As, as I've said before, almost like digesting food, you need to be able to not only take it in and then digest it, but there's also that assimilation process and the body needs to be able to rest for a period of time before the next intake of food. And the same happens for visually and for the mind. If we just keep saturating ourselves, there's almost a point where you just, you can't take in anymore, you can't digest it, you can't assimilate it, it just, you feel almost it's like being mentally bloated, it's just too much. So this is a nice way to, again, soothe the optic nerves, but also just to like bring it down, close the eyes, go within, and then decide for yourself how much more you want to draw in for yourself for the day. Okay, so take your hands, start to rub your hands, and when you generate a sufficient amount of heat between your palms, then you're going to bring your hands over top of your eyes, but cup them, so not flat hands, have them cupped. And just let the warmth and the vibration from the palms enter into your eyes. And when you begin to feel your palms cool, keeping the eyes closed again, just rub your hands, generate that heat between your palms. And again, once you feel that, just cupping again the eyes, letting that warmth, that vibration soothe your eyes, quiet the mind, go within. And then same thing one last time. Now, when you open your eyes after this one, try to think of opening your eyes almost like the sun rising. So slowly bringing the eyes towards the floor and then guiding them up to be directed forward. So once you bring again your palms, just letting, allowing that warmth Enter into the eyes, darkness, light the mind. And as I just mentioned, once you feel the palms begin to cool, keeping the eyes closed, bring first your hands to your heart center, Sanjali Gujra, Sky. And then allow the eyes to draw down. And as you're opening them, slowly bring the eyes up to face forward. Take a deep inhale through your nose. A long exhale out your mouth. And now we'll do six rounds of Nadi Shodana. So thumb and index finger detached, draw the fingers in towards the palm, closing the right nostril, and begin. Try to maintain an upright spine. Notice if you start to slouch, try to keep the navel drawn in towards the spine. As I said at the very beginning, you'll notice how the low back feels much stronger that way. And 
just continue your own pace. Your own breath night. Entering the energy channels in the body. And when we say in the body, it's not quite the same as energy channels that we associate say, with acupuncture. The slightly different mapping is in the subtle body, when we say in the body. Clearing out the energy channels. Debris, releasing any debris. Anything that's not allowing for a free flow of energy. Knowing that that free flow of energy in the subtle body, of course, affects the physical body. So in the same way that you may have noticed alignment or misalignment of the energetic body from the physical body at the very beginning, you can think too here with the subtle body and the energy channels affecting and impacting the physical body. So again, just clearing energy channels out, quieting, calming the mind, Balancing the right and the left hemisphere of the brain. Coming back into harmony, wholeness. And when you come to the sixth one, which will be your last one, just releasing your right hand down onto your knee. Release both mudras. Feel a sense of settling, of ease of peace, and then bring your attention to the midline of your body, draw down to the base of the spine, lift up through the crown of your head, and just imagine the midline of the body, pillar of clear white light, radiating from you, filling your body, with light extending out from feeling once more a sense of tranquility of peace bring your hands together at your heart center one last deep inhale through the nose and a long exhale out the mouth Giving thanks to yourself. Just you see how many different ways you can shower yourself with love and compassion today, and how you can extend that love and compassion to others. We can bring more wholeness and harmony both into our own lives and, of course, into the lives of others and ultimately into the world. When you're ready, bringing now your arms beside you, bringing the legs out, and coming into your Shavasana. Have your palms facing out, just let your feet flop. You can always draw your arms a little further out. And as always, you can remain here in your Shavasana for the next 15 minutes. If you have two minutes, be here for two. If you've got 10, be here for 10, etc. Just in closing, I did want to read to you. So while you are in your Shavasana, two thoughts to leave you with today. And may you have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. When your thoughts disappear, your true self will appear. We are boundless beings in bounded bodies. So allow your mind and your heart to expand. Know that you are an infinite being. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste.